Hey, this is David with Will It Run. Yes, we are in the shop, slightly different than doing it out in the middle of the cold or the field and so on and so forth, but we drug this one home and it's not a barn find per se, but this is a salvage vehicle from Hurricane Sandy. Number one problem, I don't think this is supposed to be loose. I think it's got a really leaky engine. It's a used car. Ooh, we're not supposed to say that. It's a classic car. Well, that sounds horrible. It smells even better. I might be driving this today. If you remember, Hurricane Sandy was 11 years ago, and it was a lot of uh, flooding and damage in the East Coast. Specifically, this came out of New York, and it was flooded supposedly up above the um, rocker panels. May or may not have gotten into the engine. Certainly got everything wet enough that the car was totaled out. So we're going to go through and do some due diligence, a little bit different than we have in the past, a little more due diligence of changing your oil, checking into the spark plugs, and really doing a little better job of cleaning it up to drive it. We're not sure what we're gonna get into. We don't know what the condition of the floor is. Uh, I mean, we look a little visual inspection, but we are gonna lift it up. It may need the top to hold things together. Now, let's face it, these things weren't all that structurally sound to begin with. And if you think they were, you're fooling yourself because when you look at the structure and how they were originally designed, it's a flat sheet of metal going between the driver's seat and the passenger seat. When the top is down, that's going to paper plate and do this, is what it is. And no, I'm not going to do the normal spoof of go to the front, open up the hood, and play stupid that I don't know where the motor's at. Motor's in the back. Look at that. Turbo air, 164. 110 whopping horsepower. When I say... This hasn't been touched since Hurricane Sandy. It was drug into a different area and stored inside, outside, wherever it basically found a home that no one was hitting it. Nothing's been done as far as trying to salvage it, rinse it out, all those things. But honestly, other than what maybe was already there, the car seems to have fared fairly well. Not ideal situation after a flood, but here's where we're at. It's going. This is the the machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's Stop not yelling. Yelling. There's no load here. Did you get the rental insurance? Because that is pretty important too at a time like this. Do we have any sign of how far the water went? So far. No witness of any water up top. I find this, well, probably not too crazy, but I doubt zip ties were factory installed. But it works well. There's a lot. That's nice. I don't see anything down the carburetor. I mean, they're all... Shiny, shiny and clean. Eh? Salt water usually doesn't make a very good cleaner on aluminum. But I suppose that where this was hit, it was more brackish water than pure salt water. So I'm gonna say it didn't get much higher than the floorboards. That doesn't look out of the ordinary. I mean, the rotor and the cap have Kind of a normal look for something sitting. So when we get there, we'll clean that up. But for right now, we'll leave that off. And we didn't try to, look at this. First problem I find, I'm finding. I'm guessing we'll have to do something slightly different with the uh, balancer pulley setup here. Uh, this is just pure speculation on my part, but I'm guessing if I were pulling this pulley, it should have some resistance on the crankshaft and the pulley should still be attached to the balancer. Uh, right now it's not. That won't stop it from running though, folks. It'll just stop it from cooling.
cooling and charging. Probably making a little noise. So we won't get too excited there. We didn't do the obvious of look at the oil. Yeah, but here we are. I don't see anything. I mean, it's oil all the way through, but of course, water's gonna sit at the bottom, so we could be washing it right off. It's not overly full, so that's okay. But let's, let's get this in the air and see what the bottom of this looks like and what our oil and fluids look like. Of course, to drive this, if it was sitting in salt water, you would certainly want to go through the brakes. So we will pull everything off, inspect the brakes, make sure everything looks pretty good that way. But we're going to make sure it runs first before we get too far ahead of ourselves. I don't see anything crushing. That's a good sign, right? Ah, all the way up. Go for the gold. What's the worst thing that happens? It stays up high, comes down. Eh. We might not have to drain a whole lot of oil. For some reason, it appears that these are doubled up. The factory must have doubled up the floor pan, so you almost have an inner and an outer, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but. So this is probably a little bit of a weak spot through here, a little bit there. I don't see it folding in half. This thing's been whacked a couple times. Well, hey, you know, it's a used car. Ooh, we're not supposed to say that. It's a classic car. So we have yucky wheel bearings. Well, need to be tightened up at least on that one. So the shock eye slid out from the rubber, rubbing against the control arm or the lower swing arm. That'll make some noise. Well, I tell you what, I don't see anything that tells me to not make this run and drive. That's what I think. Okay. All right, let's get a pan underneath here. Let's get our oil dropped and we'll inspect it kind of as it pours out. All right, we're gonna do our oil change slightly different than most people, I suppose. We're gonna capture it in this huge beaker because I wanna see if we can visibly see any uh, water. Water will separate, it'll sit down here, oil will sit up on top, and we may be able to see some amount, opposed to just when we drain it, we might see it then too, but this will be a nice visual if it's truly there. It looks pretty black. I'll say that's a good sign. And whatever it was sitting in didn't rinse any of the oil off the bottom of it. Maybe it didn't see. But you know, you can see white here. This is definitely salt. Same thing up here. Yep. Okay, so <clears throat> we have it up in the air. We're draining the oil. We can smell some nasty fuels. And if you've ever been around one of them cans that gets green, you'll know exactly what I mean. So I don't know if we're getting, just because we raise things up, maybe we're close to the vent now for the tank and we're smelling it just because it's underneath the car or it's coming out of the oil. But one of the things we're going to do is we're not going to run it through the factory tank like we have in the past. Uh, we do the same thing. We're basically going to jump the tank. So we'll run a, we'll run an external tank and, and plumb it to fire it up the first time. Uh, up in here, and actually we do have a little bit of gas leak. I can see it here. Yeah, that's not good. Yuck. Pewy. <clears throat> so here's your gas tank is out in front. Um, quite honestly, in front of your feet, in the trunk area of the car. Um, but I do see this as being our shifter cable, or our, I'm sorry, our clutch cable, and it has been happier. Um, it's down to about, it looks like three wires. So we'll get this running. I don't think we'll take this out on the road like this because I'd hate to get stranded in the center of an intersection to where, well, you know, be a hazard and such. But driving around the lot, not a big deal. I got guys that can push me. Well, off the cuff, 
I don't see any any water in there. You guys see any water? I don't see any water. Just to kind of prove my point of what it would look like if there was a bunch of water in the engine or it had been ingested through the intake side of things because of the flooding, uh, I'm going to put about, no, not quite as much as this in there, but we're not seeing any now just to verify that. But let's say it had oil or water in the oil. It'll probably take a minute for it to totally separate. You see that? Yep. I can see it from my side. At this point, I'm not seeing a bunch of water ingested into the motor from it being flooded. Now, granted, it does have some leaks, but it, they mainly seem to come from the higher points. So water would leak past, you know, for instance, this seal quicker than the oil would, and it has been leaking on the ground. But I'm not seeing any any reason to believe there's a bunch of water or has been any water in there. So I'm going with, we're good to keep moving forward. All right, well, let's pull the fill plug out in someone's wise engineering move. They didn't put drains or anything on these. So you have to draw it out of the fill plug, which seems like a real minor penny save, but whatever. Can I just drill a hole in the bottom now? Tap it. This might not be the most efficient use of your time. For what it's worth, I'm not seeing any water. I'm also not seeing a lot of fluid. <laughs> I would highly recommend a slightly quicker tool than this. But it's great for thumb exercises. Oh, this looks good too. I don't see anything in there. That keeps our mechanical components in a little better situation. There's a little fuel in that though. It smells green. That just smells like bad grease. Ugh. Yuck. Okay, let's uh, put this back down on the ground, get our oil filter off as well. We'll have to get some gear lube back into this, and let's get the plugs up. Here's your stock balancer rubber. So there's an isolator between, they're bonded. So you have your pulley is bonded to your balancer or the solid piece of the hub. And there's this rubber piece in between there um, that normally doesn't, it's not a separate chunk. And I see another one too here. There's how you get the belt up. So, the oil filter's in the way. Who puts an oil filter there? Maybe this won't do anything more than loosen up. Ha <laughs> ha! See, I, lo I almost lost faith, but look how simple that was. I didn't even pour it all over everything. Again, no sign of anything that way. We'll get an oil filter as well. But this is really what I want to get out of the way. It won't come out of that hole. Come this way. Yeah, yeah that, that's supposed to be attached. All right, let's get that swapped out of there. Ooh. Spinning. She's a spinning. It does turn. It at least some. I don't want to get too ahead of myself and spin it a bunch of times, um, but that's a good sign that it is loose from that aspect. Uh, I'm going to take and pull all the spark plugs and put some uh, breakaway or some fashion in there and then spin it a little bit more by hand. I also won't be fighting any compression that way too, so uh, let's get that done.
All right, well, here's our six plugs. I didn't keep them in any order when I pulled them out because, well, quite frankly, they all look exactly the same. That can be good or bad. That means all the cylinders are doing exactly the same thing. In this case, it looks like they're all burning oil and they're all rich. Now, moving forward, instead of just getting some fresh plugs and throwing it in there, I'm gonna actually go through and see how many of these still have spark, but I am gonna put them in the parts cleaner and clean them up really well. And I might even put a little vapor hone on them to clean all the gook off them and uh, hook them back up, spin her over and see what we have for spark. And I'll just replace whatever I have to. Given that, we're just trying to do this as cheaply as we can and see what we can salvage. I'm gonna go as far in as I can get and then just kind of spray it up and out. If this had an issue with being completely stuck, then I would make sure I let this soak for several days. But at this point, we don't see that it is stuck. That's enough. Yeah, I'm gonna clean the points on this distributor. That's what I'm gonna do. Same thing on the cap, and the same thing on the rotor. So your points of contact obviously are in the end of this and up here. Just make sure they don't have a bunch of corrosion on them. This usually doesn't because it's stainless, but with the brass end down here, we'll have some. Just take some sandpaper, clean it off. As long as you don't get the gap ridiculous, it should at least fire across. So I'm just going to reach down inside here and hit all these little terminals. That's what distributes the electricity to the plugs. Look at these. These have been sitting. See how white and corroded they are? That won't make a great contact. Now we can test and see if we have some spark. Drop the plug on there and hold on to it, spin it over. Got to put our battery in though. Maybe it's no good at all. All right, so I threw our battery that was in here on the charger and it won't take anything. So I'm gonna swap it over to this one. I just need a top post battery. So we'll just flip flop her. Maybe that's why the battery was dead. Brake switch is stuck, or, uh, yeah, brake switch is stuck. So look at this. Those ugly plugs aren't as ugly anymore. So all I did is put them a little degreaser to take the schmutz off of them and then put them through the vapor hone, just sprayed in there a little bit. Got all the porcelain and the electrode loop cleaned up. And now we'll see if they're dead inside because at this point they should make a jump across, no, no issues. Gaps look, oh, the gaps are perfect. I mean, look at that, the gaps are nice. Okay, John, key on, good. We got power back here to the coil. All right. Go ahead and spin it over a few times. We'll look for spark here coming across the point. Oh, all kinds. Well, that sounds horrible. Uh, it smells even better. Before we get going, let's, I will take a disconnect the fuel line so we're not dragging more crappy fuel from the tank in. I don't want to even tell you what it, I can't even describe what it smells like. It's just this. Watch it just drip like twice. <laughs> uh, look at that line though, it's completely gone. That rubber line is just garbage. It's nice to know it's completely empty though, to be honest with you, or plugged. So I just pulled the fuel line and got that kind of drained out and a little of that nasty. So as we turn this over and check the spark, I'm not drawing any more fuel up into the carburetors if it's bad. Now, 
On the same note, I got slightly ahead of ourselves when we checked it for spark and power just to the distributor. Um, and I'm not gonna go further because I'm gonna put some oil in it. And as I'm turning it over, checking for spark on all my spark plugs, then I'll actually be priming the oil at the same time instead of running them dry. Cause I know you're all sitting there going, he's running it dry. So we're not gonna do that just for clarification. So as you can see, these pH fours for a Corvair are extremely popular here in Northern Michigan because well, it's not sunny for this to fade out. This box looks pretty horrendous, but it's not what's in the box. It's important. It's the filter and the filter is nice and shiny. Always a good idea to pre-fill the oil filters when they're not installed upside down because no sense in wasting crank time filling the oil. Hey, it's Kyle Smith, mm -hmm. our local Corvair expert. Mr. Smith, you're on the air. How you doing? I'm good. good. So wh what can you tell me about Corvair balancers? How important are they to have the pulley on them when I fire this thing up? Yes. If you want the honest truth. You heard it there, folks. Technically not required. Per you, you can't get away Kyle, Kyle A. Smith. Uh, you can get away with running it. Don't run it long. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's your cooling system. But, uh, right. I mean, you can definitely get it to run without one. Okay. I have a balancer here. I have a solid one, and I have uh, one that's probably usable, a core at best. Okay. It would work. Uh, but I don't have a puller to yank them off a snout. But I'm happy to bring one in. Okay. Make a puller if you need it. Yeah, that sounds great. And I may have something that I can make work as well. All right, well, I'll uh, proceed with my oil change and uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, I'll see what I can split off that motor here real quick. Okay. I plan on doing that this afternoon anyway. All oh, right on. Perfect timing. Thank you. Cool. All right, All right. talk to you in a bit. Yep, yeah, bye. So, to Kyle's point with the balancer is, yes, it's a balancer. It does a balancing function, but it does that function with or without the pulley on top of it. So what we'll do is we'll run it for a little bit of time without that on there because there's no sense in changing it if this motor needs to be rebuilt or is just grenaded. Um, and we'll just be aware that our cooling system is this fan right here. Blows across the cylinders, keeps everything cool. Obviously, there's no water pump because Corvairs do not use water to cool them. They're air-cooled. So after that, I'm just spinning this generator. This thing has points. It needs like no voltage to operate the, operate the points and fire um, all the spark plugs. So we're not going to get concerned about that at this point in time. So as soon as I finish putting oil in here, we'll get back to checking the spark plugs. Coil. That's kind of interesting. Makes sense why I did it, but. <laughs> okay, we're gonna throw the plugs in it and uh, go towards fuel. Guys, always make me do this shit the hard way. I said you put it up in the air. Not the block because it's kind of pinchy. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Breaker? 
We have a guest cranker. Brought you the shop manual. Oh. I know you don't need it. I brought you a good balancer and a puller. Need so a you put this through the center. Yeah. Through the center. How'd you turn it up? I didn't need to. I pulled it down with those. Oh. Evenly, side to side. Oh, yes. That worked good enough. I follow you. I love the ingen I mean, ingenuity. You know, I'm not holding up very long. I applaud that. That's fantastic. Well, hey, you're right in time. Aren't the the only fuel filters I can find on this? I must. I shouldn't say find. They're only here, right? Yeah. The little bronze, crappy yeah. ones. There's a sock in the tank, but that's it. All right. Fun. Okay. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull them out and spray them. Well, the over under is well, is there enough hex from the last guy with a pair of vice grips on it? That one doesn't have it as, ba as bad. It's still not great. Vice grips, not necessarily the best piece of equipment for tube nuts. You just make it a for everybody else. But you know what? When in Rome, do as Romans do. Ugh. Hey, guess what? We don't have to worry about, oh, no. Yeah, no, you don't have to worry about those. You don't have to worry about the bronze filters because, well, it's not there anymore. Because that wasn't filtering much, folks. But maybe it was stuck to the thing. Maybe it was stuck when I come up. I don't think so. It wasn't there. I we'll have see. video evidence. I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. I don't know what you're talking about. Man, all these people coming around now and telling me what I'm doing. So a live YouTube commenter, John, suggested maybe we should spray some carb cleaner here. It's not a bad idea. Well, let's see if Captain Smarty Pants is right now. The one fell out when I, I didn't see it. Dropped out. We'll go real slow this time. Okay, nothing up my sleeve. There's a different one. Look at that, that one's a screen. It's not nearly as restrictive. A little carb clean in a bottle here. So, pull those lines. There were filters in them. Uh, I took them out because we're just gonna let her in the wind, let her swing in the wind here with the fuel. I'm gonna put some fuel into the carburetors just so it has something to you know, kind of maybe kick it and prime it that way. No different than I would anything else. And then of course, as the engine is turning over, it's gonna pump the fuel pump, gonna draw the fuel from our exceptional can out front and uh, draw it all the way through there. And uh, she should fire right up, fire right up. I think it's gonna fire right up. All right, go ahead. Well, there's the fuel out of the bowls. Yeah, that's a good sign though, look at that. Fired right out. Uh, a little due diligence here. Got well, a hell of a knock, but don't worry about that. What's that? Oil pressure light went off. Did it? Yeah. Wow. Sweet. These are pretty durable motors. I hope so, because it's gonna need to be. <laughs> All right, give her another fire so we should get some, as soon as we get some fuel, where it'll sit in idle. Okay, uh, Kyle, that's where we're headed. Not picking up yet. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Needed to put these carburetors closer together. It's hard to get fuel to both of them at once. And maybe it's not getting fuel up to it yet. And if that's the case, we'll throw the uh, electric in there like I wanted to do in the first place. Yep. I suggested that, but I got beat on it. Yeah, go ahead. Look at that. 
think it needs to warm up well, which, well, we can't let it do because it doesn't have a fan on it. But it'll warm up real, real fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hey, it's running, right? That's the first call, runs. Nice. And most of that knock, don't worry about it. Nothing. Shoot, she purrs pretty good. <laughs> you got, you got a <laughs> uh, <laughs> quote quote for the day it ain't great, <laughs> ain't great. <clears throat> yeah. usually usually rats will climb down in here and right underneath this fan on top of all the cooling fins uh -huh. that's where they build their nests so that's oh. what you're cooking out here oh sweet so we're making supper so we run, we don't know if we drive and pull over yet. That's always the key. Um, but let's, since Kyle is so gracious to bring over that pulley, maybe we'll see if we can get this one off. All right, so I'm going to support the bottom of this motor with my transmission jack. That way I can pull the backside of this motor mount out I get a pretty good access point to the um, harmonic balancer that way. And then we'll cross our fingers and pull it out. And here's one of them. Look at that, that's ingenious. Amazing what scrap does. Or it's gonna punch out your teeth, one or the other, I don't know. Well, well then we'll be brought to you no by Pichet Dental. <laughs> Hey, broke it loose. Watch your lens. I don't want to whack it. Ooh, there's some treats. Oh, yeah, there's all the balancer. <laughs> yeah, there's the rest of the rubber and something else. I'll try to go the right direction. There it come. You hear it? Yeah. Nice. Kyle, well done. It's almost like we know what we're doing. Well, we don't, but it, this is working. You did your calculations well. Look at that. The rubber foot really doesn't do much. This will be a great opportunity to replace this front seal. So if yours was leaking, because this one clearly was, That'd be a good time to do it. Otherwise, just put her back on. You know, I could just put that pull out, that pusher on her. I think it'd be better anyway. Don't show that it lines up perfectly with the holes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's what? What's the torque? Shop manual's on the roof. <laughs> well, that's a fine spot for John's it. John's got to get the ladder again. <laughs> Jeez. Put the tall guy you on told it. told me you didn't need that. <laughs> the ladder's are going to work value on that. Crankshaft pull your balancer, half 20, 40 to 50 foot pounds. That's it? <laughs> All right, so we have our, uh, our new to us dampener and pulley is all assembled. We torqued her right down at a whopping 50 foot-pounds of torque per spec. I'm going to put my, well, I can put the oil filter on back up there, but get everything buttoned back up, put up, held up. Then we're going to move on to checking the brakes. Now, we kind of decided while we were working on this that we're not going to get too excited. We're just going around the building, and, well, we're close to the end of the day, so there's not going to be anybody driving around anyway. And we've got nice big snow banks if we need to bump into something. So what we're going to do is... I'm going to throw Kyle, since he volunteered to come over and help me. Um, <clears throat> we're going to throw him in the seat, and then I'm just going to actually spin the tires. He's going to hit the brakes, and then if the tires stop, we're going to call him good. And if he pumps them tight, 
and the pedal doesn't drop, well, then we know it's not leaking. So we'll be in good enough shape to go around the, the block here. Three rusty ones, two shiny ones. That's how much water I got. I need a step stool. In, out. All that stuff. Look at that. No leaks. Looks just like all the rest of them that we've already checked. All right, so we have yeah, some surface rust from sitting. Not a big deal. Maybe not the best uh, thing from a vibration standpoint, but I see no leaks as far as the cylinders are concerned. We'll check all the rest of them. We're also gonna do our spin test, but I'm calling this one good to go. So while we get up in the air, I'm going to fill my differential and transmission back up with some gear lube so I don't get silly and drive it around the block with no gear lube because I forgot. And this is just a beautiful way to do this. Highly recommend it. It's a great workout. All right, Kyle, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have you lift the heavy bucket and pour it into the tank and just the action of it going will flush out whatever might be right there. Uh, although, that's not gonna work, is it? Because the pickup is not going to freely flow unless we have a lot of fuel in it. Uh, all right, so put a lot of fuel in it. Put five gallons in it, we'll flush out whatever comes out of there naturally. If it doesn't, the fuel filter will catch it and we'll just change it a lot. <clears throat> Don't let that big jug hurt you. Good? Yeah, I'm good. Ah, here it comes. So I told you it would work. All right, I paused. You want more? Yeah, keep going. That stuff's stinky. Ooh, see how it cleared out? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Doing exactly what I thought it might. All right, so we flushed a little of that nastiness out of the tank. Obviously, there's still some in it but we're gonna put five gallons worth of gas uh, total in it. That'll help uh, kind of dilute some of that other stuff. Run it out the tailpipe. Let's set the truck, let's set, bleh. Kyle, let's set this down. I'll throw you in the seat. I'll spin the wheels individually. Just hit the brakes, make sure we don't have big puddles of fluid going places they shouldn't be. Okay, yeah, it's good. Is there something there? There's something there, but it hit two notches on the way down. Perfect, now you're just breaking free of the rust. All right, go ahead, let up. Hit it. Perfect. Hit it. Yep. I checked that one in reverse on purpose. <clears throat> All right, up. Okay. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Okay. Hit him. Okay, this one's a little out of adjustment. But it's stopping. Okay. It'll stop. Let's get one over there. Three out of four ain't bad. Come on. We probably should put the oil filter back on. You'll want a fan belt if you grab it. And we'll put the fan belt on, yep. I think we'll put the fan belt on first so I'm not fighting the oil filter. There it is. Perfect. Dripping it everywhere now. Golly. I lubricated the, the uh, wires over here. Rock and roll. That's how the 110 horsepower got there. Now I know why they had zip ties on the end of that. Yeah, 
crank this over, Kyle. You tell me if we get any fuel in that filter. And heck, it might even just fire up and run right away. New trowel. Here we go. Oh, there this is. is. Got fuel? Yep, got fuel. Nice, that pulled up tight. Good. Let's let this run and warm up. Then take it for a spin. It's idling. It's running. 11 years. 11 years. 11 years is not a long time, but given the uh, scenario, 11 years is a long time. How, uh, how smoky is it? Oh, not bad at all. That one's got some. I think it's ready for a run. That's what I think. Let's pull this down and take it for a scoop. I'll only risk one person's life doing this. There, I'm not messing with the light. Work. Sweet. Hey, first drive in 11 years. Not bad. It purrs like a kitty, honestly. Uh, brakes might be need to some adjustment. But uh, hey, this car is running 11 years after a flood and it wasn't doing it before. So if you have some curiosity about some car that you might come across, go try it. The worst thing you're going to do is be frustrated that you wasted a little bit of time, but I guarantee you'll learn something. Go out there, get in the shop, go get your work done. See ya.